And some people thought it was strange that you even would ha set a novel in Turkey, right? Yes, that was a big thing. It was sort of, you know, Turkey, seriously, <laughs> go away. It's, it's quite difficult writing about somebody else's country. <laughs> Welcome to Pop and Politics. I'm your host, Kenan Besat Sharp. Each week on the show, we host a writer, director, artist, or other creative worker in Turkey. And today, we are joined by Barbara Nadel. She is an award winning English crime writer. Many of her books are set in Turkey and others in London. She is best known for her series set in 20th century Istanbul, the Çetin Ikmen novels. Following a chain smoking and hard drinking detective on the Istanbul police force, the Ikmen novels have been translated into Turkish and German. The novels are currently being adapted for television, with acclaimed Turkish actor Haluk Bilginer starring as Ikman. The series will be released on Paramount Plus's streaming platform. Her second crime series, set in the east end of London during the Blitz, features Undertaker Francis Hancock. With 2012's A Private Business, she started a new series set in modern-day London. These books focus on private investigator Lee Arnold and his Muslim ass assistant Mumtaz Hakim. Herself from London's East End, Nadel also worked as an actress and for the National Health Service as a mental health advocate for the mentally disordered. She now lives in a small village in Essex, just outside London, and continues to visit Turkey frequently, as she has for 30 years. Barbara, welcome to the show. Thank you, Kinnan. Um, so I want to ask you, of course, about how you first came to Istanbul. So I know you've been coming since the 70s. And yeah. I read somewhere that you had said, you know, rather than what is... Um, you know, sort of exotic about Istanbul, what struck you first is how much it resembled where you're from. Yes, absolutely. And I'm really curious about what Turkey was like in the 70s. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, it was very familiar to me um, because I come from part of London that is very crowded. Um, it's, I mean, where I come from, it, it's, you know, it's always traditionally been very poor. My family were very poor originally, um, but, now it's sort of it, it's like Istanbul it's gentrifying and so it's quite interesting to see the two places as they as they develop you know um, I mean there are places here like Jihangir you know I mean when I first came here that was just you know poor people lived there um, and it was I wouldn't say it was a completely different place because even then I mean it was the late 70s so even then, it was quite kind of bohemian. Um, uh, unlike London, the part of London that I'm from, the East End, that has recently become bohemian because I think, you know, somebody saw an opportunity, all these kind of big properties that nobody wanted really. Let's convert them into flats and put some cafes in and make the whole thing boho. Um, and sell lots of vintage clothes in the shops, a bit like Jiangir, yeah, definitely. <laughs> very much <laughs> so. Um, but yeah, and it was, I mean, I really kind of resonate with, um, Orhan Pamuk wrote a book, Istanbul, um, and he talked about the city in black and white. Mm. And I do remember that. It was very kind of monochrome. And I think that was one of the things that resonated with me between the two cities. London was like that. Mm. It was very monochrome. Um, the difference here, I think, was that you could see so many, so much beauty underneath that. Whereas in London, probably because of too much familiarity, I couldn't really see that, but here there was always sort of the promise of something amazing underneath the soot. Mm. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's changed hugely. And of course the population, which I think was about five million then. Mm. Um, so it's at least tripled since then. Yeah, yeah, well, and London hasn't actually. Um, we are, I think we're about between eight and nine million, but that was the same when I was a child. Um, it's just that different people have moved, you know, there's been sort of people moving out, different people have moved in, but the population's pretty stable there. I don't really know why. Yeah. 
Um, so you, you mentioned your background. Something I'm curious about is you, know, you talk about growing up working class mm. and you know, the part of London that you're from. I'm curious how that fits into your novels, the sort of subjects you choose or the characters. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you kind of lose that empathy for ordinary people. You, well, some people do. Some <laughs> people do. Um, I won't go into that. But, um, you know, a lot of us, you don't actually want to lose touch with that. I still live in a largely working class area. Um, having said that, it's one of these places, and again, you know, there are references here with Turkey as well. It's still a working class area, but if you want to buy property there, you need very, very deep pockets. Um, and it's, you know, the same problems that were uh, happening in my childhood are still there. They're just covered up a bit more now. I like to explore those sort of characters. I like to explore ordinary people's issues, although it might in the book sometimes come out as somewhat bizarre. <laughs> but actually, you know, having worked in psychiatric institutions, I can tell you and work with a lot of, you know, disordered families where the, the um, not the mental disorder, but the deprivation goes down many, many generations. Um, and I feel very strongly about that because we never get to the bottom of that. You know, it, it's only, uh, my father used to say, the only way out is education, which is what the way I got out, if mm. you like. Um, but even that now is more problematic. Um, it costs more. Um, and I think a lot of people have this impression that they're, are other ways that you can earn lots and lots of money. Well, of course there are, but not everybody can be, um, you know, a reality TV star, <laughs> however much they may want to be. Yeah. Another aspect of your books that's really interesting is how multicultural your mm. portrayal of Istanbul is. Mm. So you have, you know, Armenian characters, Greek characters, Albanian, Roma, etc. Mm. What led you to emphasize this part of, uh, of the city? What interests you about that? I think I was drawn to those parts of the city because of where I come from. Mm. Um, because, you know, I grew up with all different types of people. I'm in my own self. I am multicultural. So I think you're drawn to those sort of people and those places and you tend to go to like, you know, for instance, an Armenian church, you tend to go there because you're kind of drawn to it because mm. it's a bit on the outside. Um, having said that, a lot, I mean, a lot of the characters are ordinary Turkish people mm -hmm. as well. But yeah, I think you're kind of almost, when you come from a multicultural society, you're kind of set up to do that, mm. really. Yeah. And it's interesting, too, thinking about your first novel came out, you wrote it in the early 90s, right? And it came out in 1999. Mm. It's very difficult. I mean, I'm sure this, is, this applies in almost every country that has a, uh, you know, a, a sizable public publishing industry. If you don't know anything and you don't know anybody, it's quite difficult because you do make sort of really silly mistakes to start <laughs> off with. Um, I mean, I knew absolutely nothing. I knew absolutely nobody. And it's quite intimidating because, of course, overlaid on, on all these, you know, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> and <laughs> this is a completely new industry. I'm just somebody who works in a hospital. Um, is also the class system mm -hmm. in the UK. So immediately, you know, however much I may try to change the way I speak, they know you know, people know that I'm not one of them um, because the, the voice gives it away. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I mean, I did lots of stupid stuff like, I thought, oh, this book is brilliant. You know, I'm Marcel Proust. Um, <laughs> and just sent it to random publishers and who could sent it back and said, this is what, you know, didn't even read it. And some people thought it was strange that you even would ha set a novel in Turkey, right? Yes, that was a big thing. It was sort of, you know, Turkey, seriously, <laughs> go away. Um, 
But then things changed during the course of the 90s. Um, and I, I'd, I'd learned by that time that, you know, there were people called agents. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, instead of trying to, because I mean, everything that I do, I should explain, is driven by necessity, what originally it was. And, you know, because both my husband and myself come from working class backgrounds. You know, we've been sort of in and out of work. We've been ducking and diving to keep going and over the years and and he had another of these occasions where he was out of work and so we were trying to live on a salary my salary which was just from the nhs which mm -hmm. was just pathetic um and this book that i'd written to sort of amuse myself um i thought well i better get it out there you mm -hmm. know because it, then i might get some money for it because <laughs> that's always unfortunately been the driver, you know. Um, and I, as I say, I, I did get this agent who said, well, I don't know, it's quite good. I like it, it's unusual, you know, but I don't know whether I can do anything with it. But she did. Um, and then it continued. I mean, how many of the Chitinic men? 25. Yeah. 25, it's yeah. incredible. Yeah. yeah, it has, but I think that also goes along with more people coming to Turkey mm. um, so you know there was more of a market by that time um, often it's to do with you know so many of these things are to do with chance it's finding the right desk for this thing to land on you know because you'll get a lot of people who you know editors and what have you know they won't even look um, and it's also timing mm -hmm. and more people were coming here from the West by that time. Um, you know, I mean, people have always come here, but not on, not kind of mass tourism, I don't think. It was more along the lines of sort of travelers, if you like, backpackers mm -hmm. going to India to find themselves and discovering something else <laughs> generally. <laughs> have you ever had conflicts with your publisher about how they think, you know, Westerners want Turkey to be portrayed versus how you see it. I remember you saying once that they wanted more mosques and things like that yeah. in the stories versus the modern Istanbul you know. Yes. Are, are there ever conflicts about that stuff? Not really. They do tend to leave that to me. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think sometimes it's sort of... Uh, there was a thing, because I've written a couple of books that were not in Istanbul, um, because I genuinely thought, you know, people will be interested Cappadocia particularly, you know, but it was, they really, you know, the, the message they got from their sales and the message that I got from some readers, I mean, by no means all, was that, you know, they like it to be in Istanbul. Mm. And I mean, it's very lucky because there's so much material here. You know, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a hardship, it's just <laughs> that, I do like to go outside sometimes and do something a bit different. Of course. And you had a, a novel also that took place in Mardin, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I loved. I loved Mardin. Mm. Um, it's, it, it's a whole kind of, you know, it's totally different to here. Um, and there's a kind of a sort of spookiness about it that I like. But then that I pick up here as well. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm one of those people that, you know, I, some people would call it fanciful, some people would call it mad, um, but I do sort of pick up on those things. And this is a place where there's so much history, like, like Mardin, you know, so it's quite, because people sometimes say, you know, you've got weird people in your books, <laughs> alchemists and things. Yeah, I said, well, they exist, I've met them. Yeah. You know, another interesting thing about the Ikmen books is that he ages, right? Mm. And as he as he ages, Turkey also ages and moves yes. through time. And there's moments where you get little hints in the background of political things happening. So mm. one of your novels mentions the Gezi Park protests in yeah. 2013. Yeah, I'm curious how much Turkish politics comes into the work, even if it's just as background. It is just background because I think it's 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 quite difficult writing about somebody else's country 
from that point of view. However, having said that, you can't ignore politics. Because if you do, I think you're doing everybody a disservice because of course it impacts on daily life. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, in my own country, you know, the, the books that I'm writing at the moment set in the UK, I mean, that, I obviously, I feel more on firm ground um, talking about that. But I mean, it, you know, at the moment, politics is hugely important in our country because, you know, basically we've gone, I mean, this is a political thing that I'm going to say, but I'm just going to say it mm -hmm. since we left the EU, the country has collapsed mm -hmm. in certain directions. Mm -hmm. um, and people's state of, people's everyday way of thinking, it altered that. I mean, you know, basically some people are more concerned about uh, what I would class as things that are not important. Well, not important in the way they think they are. Um, to, you know, a country that's be that was once, I'm not talking about the empire, I'm talking about just economically in the last 20, 30 years, a country that, was, that had quite a bit of clout with the EU behind it has now become a bit of a joke mm -hmm. um, because certain people uh, found a way of um, changing people's minds of course. in a way that was not helpful. And in some ways that's happened here too. I mean, one thing I thought about with your early novels mm. is the time period in which it was written, mm. when there was still a lot of hope about Turkey joining the EU and, lots yeah, of, and yeah. relationships with Europe were getting stronger. Yes. And in some ways I, I can almost see that optimism reflected in your books with yeah. the multiculturalism and the yeah. relationships with Europe. And, but then of course we live in a really different moment now in Turkey where if anything it's gotten further away. Yes. Um, I mean, the whole issue of the EU, I mean, I, I look upon it in quite a simplistic way now. I think I used to think about it in a more complicated fashion, but because of sort of geopolitics, we've now been sort of forced into these really black and white positions, um, particularly with the invasion of Ukraine. Um, now Britain is, I know we're still part of NATO, but we are not part of the European Union anymore. And in a way, we're more exposed. Mm -hmm. um, and that is not comfortable. Um, and I think also, you know, you're talking about Turkey, a, a lot of stuff, not just in the UK, but all across the EU, there have been a lot of anti-EU movements. And I think for countries that um, hoped possibly to join, that's changed in character a bit now. You've got more people who are going kind of, well, really? But, you know, so-and-so says that it's, it's like a sort of dictatorship. And you think, no, no, <laughs> you're having your brain fried. But that has gained traction over the years. Mm -hmm. So, and I think, you know, particularly as you say with Turkey, when, if people manage to convince others that that could be the way it could go, it does take away that optimism. Because mm -hmm. you think, this club that I've been wanting to join for years that were really strict and, and we're really, I mean, a lot of the behavior was not good in terms of Turkey. You know, how many hoops do we have to jump through here? Um, and then, you know, you're, you're getting a message that perhaps this club is not all that it seems anyway. It does kind of take your legs away a bit. It's like, what now? Mm -hmm. Returning to literature, I know, um you talked about when you first wrote your, your first novel, there wasn't much crime fiction set in Turkey. No. But I think it's grown a lot since then. What's oh, the scene like here? Yeah. Are there Turkish detective writers that you read and enjoy? Um, yes. I mean, there's more lit what we would call literary fiction coming out of here, but there are crime novels coming through. Ahmed Umit, I mm -hmm. think. He's the, I interviewed him in London, mm. actually, some years ago at the London Book Fair. Yeah, I mean, there is stuff coming through. But there is a sort of um, 
literary kind of, you know, it borders on mm. crime fiction. Yeah. You can take that step. I mean, I would say that some of Elif Shafak's stuff is actually crime, mm -hmm. um, but it, it's literary as well. Um, or Orhan Pamuk is like that yes, as well with the Black yes, Book. Yes, yeah. absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. No, it's grown hugely here, and I think it's really encouraging, um, you know, because, and I think people here read more now than they did possibly in previous years. There seems to be more interest. Mm -hmm. And last of all, I have to ask you about the adaptation of the, oh, yeah. of the Ikmen. Uh, the, I think it's going to be called The Turkish Detective, it right? It is, and yes. What's the process? What's going on? And have you um, been able to see the set? Yes, I have. Um, I came in October, and it was the last week of filming. Mm. Um, and so uh, we had the wrap party and everything. <laughs> it was great. The weather was much better than <laughs> as well, because the studios are up by the airport. Mm. Um, a huge, I mean, I knew that Turkey had a big film and TV, very sophisticated film and TV industry, you know, and it's just like, God. <laughs> I remember going up there and they were, uh, they were shooting a historical drama on the stage next to ours. And I had a wonderful time because it was, uh, you know, it was an Ottoman thing and they had horses there as well, <laughs> which was wonderful because I love horses. Um, but yeah, I went onto the the set um, because it's it's a sort of uh, it's Paramount. Um, Paramount um, got together with Miramax. Now they are producing this together, together with IAPIM. Um, and I mean, it, it's a complicated thing because I arrived here and there were the English executives, you know, and you're thinking because of course they've got offices in London and that's where I originally met them which was an extraordinary experience because a lot of authors get you know you get called into meetings with film people and the first time it happens you sort of you can't quite believe it and you whoa um, but when you've done that ten times you tend to be a bit sort of cynical and, you know, oh, it's just another one. And I wasn't, when I went to their offices in London, I wasn't feeling very well. Um, I, ha I had the start of flu, actually. And so I'm half asleep and I get in there and there's all these people. And it's like, we're really doing it, wow. you know, and here's a contract. And it's, oh my God, it's so peculiar. But, um, yeah, I haven't got a date for when it's out yet. It's on Paramount Plus. Um, but it was wonderful because Haluk Bilginir is... He's a Ikman. fantastic actor, He's yeah. fabulous. I mean, I remember him in England mm -hmm, when mm -hmm. he worked in England for a number of years. Um, but he is the epitome of Chetin Ikman. Yeah, he's perfect for that character. He right? is absolutely perfect. And he's <laughs> so lovely. He's such a nice person. You know, so they, there's an old saying, isn't there, don't meet your heroes. And quite often that is very true. <laughs> but not in this case. Mm -hmm. He's absolutely loved. The whole cast are just brilliant. And I'm so glad because you do, you get the horrors about things sometimes, you know, because you sort of think, hmm, I wonder. Because I did actually make suggestions on casting and, and they did do it. Mm. But you, you often wonder, as the author, you think, are they going to do it? Or are we going to get some sort of uh, British star whose stock is really high at the moment? And you think, no, that's so wrong. But you don't know what to say because you haven't got a lot of power in that situation. Mm. But, but you've been happy with the choices. Oh, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, and I went on to the set, which was just brilliant. Um, it must be crazy to see your, your world brought to life, right? <laughs> it's weird because it's like looking inside your own head. Luckily, because if I'd gone on to that, that, there were two sets that I went on to. One was police station and the other one was Aikman's apartment. And that was, you know, the attention to detail was just incredible. Um, family photographs and 
um, little knickknacks and things. And it was just how I had imagined it. You know, it's a bit chaotic. And there was a there was a scene when everybody was in that household. They were having dinner with uh, Suleiman, who uh, is the sort of sidekick, if you like. And everybody's talking at once. Everybody's grabbing food, you know, and it was just so right. And they had lived it, which really worked. I mean, it takes a level of skill to do that. Um, but it just, it just worked, and it was all done in one take. And you think, wow, these people are brilliant. And of course, some of them, the, the actors playing his children, very young as well, and yet they just, they just did this thing, you know, they all had this meal and just talked about their day and the, the rubbish that we all talk over the dinner table, you yeah. know. But when you plan to do that, it's a different thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm excited to see it, definitely. I can't wait I for am. it to come out, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we saw at the rap party, apparently they, they sent some footage back to London um, and then there was like a big screen, we were outside and they they had sort of put together a kind of rough and ready trailer and it looked brilliant. I mean, I'm sure it's a lot more polished now, mm -hmm. but it looked exciting, it looked interesting. Fantastic, yeah. 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 Well, thanks so much for coming on the show, Barbara. Thank you for inviting me. Pleasure to me. talk with you. And you, thank you.